Support comes from Hampton Roads Community Foundation, partnering with donors from all walks of life to improve southeastern Virginia through grants, scholarships, and leadership initiatives. Learn more at hamptonroadscf.org. Hello, everyone. I'm Barbara Ham Lee. What's your relationship with music? Does a particular song trigger feelings of happiness or sadness, maybe a special occasion? Does music help you get through the day, doing your chores, working at your desk, or simply relaxing? How about getting you through traffic? (laughs) Up next on Another View, we introduce you to the man who can make a difference in your next commute. His name is Jerry Carter, and he's the voice behind the Blues Traffic Jam, heard on the Time Machine Radio Network. Stay tuned. Another View will be right back after this national, regional, and local news from NPR and WHRO News. Discussing today's topics from an African-American perspective, this is Another View. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Another View. I'm Barbara Ham Lee. Before we get started with our program today, let me remind you that the Hampton Storytelling Festival, you can remember a couple weeks ago, we had some fantastic storytellers on the air with us, and it is still going on. But want to make sure that you remember that the local storyteller showcase is coming up this This Saturday, July the 22nd, it starts at noon at the Northampton Community Center, which is on Todd's Lane in Hampton. So come out and hear your local storytellers do their thing. And they've been practicing all week and they've been getting ready. So come out and support them. That is this Saturday, the 22nd, uh, starting at noon at the Northampton Community Center, 1435 A Todd's Lane. And it is free and open to everyone. So today's show features a member of the WHRO public media family. Now I'm talking about WFOS-FM, the Time Machine Radio Network. It's the latest radio station to join WHRO-FM and WHRV, and you can listen on 88.7 FM or 99.3, or stream it at timemachineradio.org. Now at 3 p.m., You'll hear a show called The Blues Traffic Jam. And behind the mic is our guest on today's Another View, the soulful, sultry voice belonging to Mr. Jerry Carter. Hey, Jerry. How you doing? Good morning. Good morning. It's good to be here. Good. It's kind of a little early for you, too, isn't it? No, I'm up. You know, I'm older now. I walk the floors at night. (laughs) That's what old folk do, you know. That's what old folk do. Yeah, then we sleep during the day like vampires. (laughs) So before we get into our conversation, I do want to play a clip because I want people who may not have heard uh, your show or heard you Mm -hmm. on the radio and hear how you sound. Let's hear it. Hollywood fans in this band talking about uh, Kansas City. Let's jump blues for a year. 23 minutes after 4 o'clock. Go back Thursday, Jerry Carter with you. Uptown, downtown, all around travel. Trying to raise the dead, trying to heal the sick. Yeah, trying to heal the sick. Everybody needs a little healing sometime, I say. Skies climb. Trying to raise the dead, trying to... <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm not original. Uh, I'll be the first to admit that uh, that that what I just said was a a lyrical piece from a blues song. Mm -hmm. And over the years uh, that I've been listening to radio, even as a young boy, uh, certain things like that caught my attention. It's like the old griots Mm -hmm. back in the day. And then uh, you were talking about rhyming Mm -hmm. and storytellers. Well, um, that's where I get that from. It's it's not not all mine. 
but uh, it reminds me of when I was growing up and when I was listening to DJs because yeah. because you're talking. I'm to talking your to audience. people, yeah. yeah, and I'm just having fun uptown, downtown, all around town, trying to heal the sick, <laughs> trying to raise the dead, trying to make all the pretty girls talk out of their head. You know, Jerry Carter behind the mic playing all the good stuff that I hope you like. Uh, those are things that. Um, the boys would say playing basketball or tennis in the park after a basketball game, or um, it all depends on what radio station you work on, how much freedom you had. Yeah, could you uh, take bits and pieces from uh, from poems? You know, mm-hmm. regardless of who wrote the poems, you may find a sentence, you know, or you know. Stuff Just like something that. that clicks with yeah, you. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, something that's not a complete sentence. No subject, no predicate. Right. Got, got you. Yeah. So who is Jerry Carter? I've been uh, with well, Jerry Carter. Okay, I know Jerry, <laughs> but I don't know the other guy. <laughs> Jerry Carter is, uh, is a young man who grew up in Roanoke, Virginia, who one night turned on the radio and couldn't turn it off because I was listening to some guys oh. who sounded like me. Uh, we didn't have black radio at the time, so I was uh, DXing. I mean, it's turning the dial, trying to find something. And that's where I would go play because I had a set of encyclopedias that my aunt gave me. Mm-hmm. And I would go to Cleveland. And I found a Cleveland number, and, and you know, I found out, hey, this is Cleveland. And I would look at the skyline. And, oh, I would, no. and then I would dream about maybe one day visiting these cities. Uh, because my mom wouldn't let me play outside with the fellas uh, after the uh, lights came on. Oh, yeah, I remember that. You had to yeah. be on the front porch by the time the well, street lights case, came on. Well, in my case, I had to be in the room, oh, in my okay. room. Okay. So my mom's best friend gave me uh, a Zenith uh, a r- record player mm-hmm. with AM and FM on it, but there was no FM at the time. Oh, wow. It was all AM. AM. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, I would get bored after I read a couple of books that my aunt gave me because she would test me every week. She taught at Howard, mm-hmm. and she made me read it all the time, and I hated her. <laughs> but it paid off, didn't it? Uh, I had no idea what she was setting me up for. I owe it all to Ethel Lean. Uh, mm-hmm. She uh, took me to juke joints in D.C. in the summer when I would go up there for basketball camps. Wow. You know, we go to a juke joint one minute and we're going to see South Pacific the next. So that's why you have such a eclectic um because you you in when you look at your resume, you mm-hmm. you cover all different genres of music. Even though yeah. your show on um the Time Machine Network is is the blues, right. but you have had experience with all kinds of music. I have uh what I found out um when I got into the game of broadcasting Mm-hmm. I was the janitor at a radio station. That's how you got in? Yeah. Uh, I I was going to Ferrum Junior College. I just got back from Vietnam. Mm-hmm. Was engaged to get married. And uh, my mom had a boyfriend that loved her so much, but she would never marry him. But he was a good guy. Mm-hmm. And he uh, looked at me as his son, even though he had sons. And so... Now I had two brothers, <laughs> mm-hmm. and we all got along. That's awesome. Well, he gave me uh, this building downtown, mm-hmm. and it was a radio station. So I would go in there and clean it up on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, uh, vacuum it to the bathrooms, and uh, do the mirrors, mm-hmm. dust, stuff like that. And I was getting like $150 a week. And then I would watch the guys on the air during the day because it was a daytime station. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I would go out and listen in the car. I said, gee, man, this is awesome. People are listening to these guys 85, 90, 100 miles away. You are going into people's homes. You are making their day. You're playing their favorite songs. And then I learned about the request line by sitting there watching my mentors. I didn't realize that I was watching my mentors. They were showing me the way. They didn't know what my dreams and hopes were. But that was what I really wanted to do. 
because in the punishment that I was getting every day by going to my room every night early, <laughs> listening to the radio, and I was DXing, I was listening to WLS in Chicago. In Chicago, yeah. Mm. And Super CFL mm -hmm. and WABC New York, WGAR Cleveland. So that's how I learned to call letters to all the markets, Rochester, Dick Beyond it. So you were a little boy, so you knew from, from a was, young age. I was 10. Wow. 10, 11, 12, 13 years old. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't know anything about color. Mm. You know, black parents don't teach you about color. Meaning? They just tell you you're a person, and you see other people who don't look like you, and you know that they are a person. Gotcha. So you don't know anything else. You don't know anything about the idiosyncrasies of what make that person who they are mm -hmm. until somebody does something to you that hurts your feelings. Then you realize that's poison. I got to leave that alone. Mm. Did I they can't. teach you, did they have to the talk with you about police? Um, no, we had black police that were ruthless. <laughs> <laughs> We had, well, no, I'm not going to say that. I'll take that back. Mr. Fields, I apologize. We had a guy by the name of uh, Officer Fields. Mm -hmm. um, I think Jesse James would have ran from him. Mr. Fields did not play. He uh, he would jack you up and put you in the car and take you to take you to jail right away. So we were safe in our neighborhood, and we were safe uh, in the... Um, uh, the business district of where all the business was and all the nightlife was. So you grew up in an all-black neighborhood in Roanoke? Was uh, yeah, it? I started okay. off. And then later on, we moved uh, to an, uh, another segment of Northwest Roanoke that was integrated. Mm -hmm. And um, that's when you find out kids are kids. They don't know anything about color. Some do because they're taught. But mm -hmm. black parents don't teach their kids about color. So when you when you were growing up and you were listening to all these different radio stations because they all had different types of music yeah. involved, um, did you develop a certain propensity for one over the other? Or no, I listened to different types of music, and I embraced it. And uh, believe it or not, my style of radio uh, now that I do the blues a little bit differently here than I did at FOS. Mm -hmm. um, it was more conversational, but I'm more top 40 rock. Here? Uh-huh. Oh, oh yeah, okay. Yeah, so it's not okay. R&B, it's not Quiet Storm. I've done mm -hmm. Quiet Storm, I've done jazz. Mm -hmm. I've done just about every format. There was a, what is Cherbin? Cherbin, are you ready for this? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Cherbin is a format that was put together by uh, Top 40 Radio to describe uh a radio station that served the white community with no black announcers. So the radio stations played all black music for white teenagers because they knew they liked wow. our music. But no black announcers? None whatsoever. Maybe at midnight, overnight when nobody was listening. Isn't that interesting? That's what Cherubin was. That's the definition of Cherubin. It's just part of uh, 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 another situation that takes place uh, in the life of uh, of being, you know. Uh, so what was your radio. first radio job? It was at the radio station that I was the janitor. <laughs> I got fired. Uh, I was at nighttime. I would come in and turn on the turntables, not realizing that I was turning the turntables on. I was also turning on the transmitter. While you were cleaning? And I would play some music. Oh. <laughs> you know, I, I would play uh, Steam, Na Na, Hey Na Na, Kiss Em Goodbye, stuff like that, uh, Blood, Sweat, and Tears, and Moonlight Feels Right, and then come back behind that with James Brown or some Motown, you know? And I didn't, didn't know about formats. Mm, okay. Sometimes ignorance works. <laughs> so you would be able to play a little bit of everything and that, get everybody That's engaged. what I was doing that night that I turned the transmitter on when the transmitter was supposed to be off. 
<laughs> because I was it was a daytime station and the station signed off at five forty five. Oh, so that's and why they was, fired you. It was ten o'clock at night. <laughs> and I'm in there throwing, Hey, baby, you know, Doctor Soul bringing you the gold. K D A Y Lucky Thirteen. <laughs> stuff you know, from call letters I knew, stuff like that. Oh wow. I was in there just having a ball. <laughs> and then uh, the light came on and I answered the phone and I said, Hello. And this lady says, are you the DJ? I said, yes, ma'am. What can I do for you? Well, we want a request. I said, well, what do you want to hear? She told me what she wanted to hear. I said, where are you calling from? And she said, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. I said, where the hell is that? <laughs> I didn't realize she was calling from Canada. Wow. So I was on a 1,000-watt uh, a, a, a uh, AM station at 9, 10, in the middle of the dial, which was powerful. Right. And then I started getting telephone calls from ships at sea. Oh, my goodness. You know, then I started wondering what the hell had I done. <laughs> so when did you get caught? I got caught the following Friday when the secretary told me that she didn't have my check, that the owner mm -hmm. had it. And he wanted to talk to me about some things. Oh. So I said, oh, hell, I'm getting ready to get fired so I can't go back to school. I was going to Ferrum Junior College mm -hmm. at the time. And uh, so I had the meeting with Barry. And Barry said, sit down. He didn't ask me to sit down. He told me to sit down. <laughs> so I decided I wouldn't argue with him over that. He had my money. So uh, I sat down. He says, I got two things for you, good news and bad news. What do, you, what do you want first? I said, give me the bad news, Barry. You're fired. So I, I knew it was the janitorial service. I lost $150 a week. So I'm saying, damn, how am I going to make it to school now to pay my, my GI Bill and I had that coming right. in? So he fired me. So I got up. I said, okay. Not a problem. Then he looked at me and said, sit down. I said, what do you want now, Barry? He says, you didn't ask me what the good thing was about it. I said, there's no good. You just fired me. I just lost my money and my way to pay for my schooling. He says, sit down. And then his wife came in. Her name was, her name was Connie. Oh, hey, Jerry, did Connie, uh, uh, did, 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 did what you call it, tell you that uh, you're going to be our new morning man? <laughs> I said, I'm not coming in here early in the morning to vacuum anymore. She said, oh, no, you're not, you, you're not the janitor anymore. We, we, we're going to let you start off from middays, and then we're going to make you the morning man. You, we're going to hire you to be a, be a radio announcer. And wow. I couldn't believe it. What year was that, Jerry? 1972, March 72. 3rd, 1972. Wow. And uh, I couldn't believe that the the pathway to my future was opening up because my roommate at Vandenberg Air Force Base was an ex-DJ in Jackson, Mississippi. Mm. And he used to, every time I put on a record by Motown, and we'd be writing our sugar reports a sugar report is a love letter back home trying to tell our girlfriends don't cheat on us. <laughs> That's what a sugar, sugar report. It's called I a sugar it. report. Yeah, that was a sugar report. <laughs> so we'd be writing to Motown, you know, like uh, Smokey Robinson, and I'll find, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll try something new. Yeah. You know, stuff like you had to write that back. Uh, hey, man, I'll build your castle with a tower so high it reaches the moon. I had to steal Smokey. Uh, steal Smokey. Smokey. <laughs> had to steal it. You know, then I realized that it was a lot of good stuff between the grooves of the records. So I began to really pay attention to the writers of the records and learning who wrote the records. And like that, Ash, Ashford and Simpson. So I learned yeah. the, 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 the lyrical content. I learned the writer, uh, the songs, the albums, different uh, artists, regardless of... If the music was good, I, I wanted to hear it. Mm-hmm. I wanted to hear everything. So when I got into a radio and started programming, I started noticing radio stations were going out of business. And they were going out of business because the program directors could get started, but they couldn't finish. Mm. And what I mean by not finish, in order to be a good PD, 
I mm-hmm. feel. This is my personal opinion. Mm-hmm. I listened to everything that came to, to that radio station. I don't care whose face was on it. Even though with black music, they were not putting black artists' faces on the music the because music they wanted the music to cross over. Mm-hmm. But uh, I was listening to everything else. And then I had WLAC Nashville, Tennessee come in late at night. They were a 50,000 watt station. Mm-hmm. And uh, they were playing R&B and I. So how do you how do you program music that you personally don't like? There's, um, well, first of all, for I, you, is there any music you don't like? Um, <laughs> but but you know what I'm saying. Music, In other words, how do you how do you decide this this will catch on? Even though it's not my personal taste, yeah. this will catch on for. It's easy uh, building radio stations, and I've done four from the ground up. Wow. I uh, always went with the people who hired me what it was they wanted. I made them give me a mission statement. Okay. So the music. They, they would tell the me mission. what they wanted mm-hmm. and I could deliver it. The reason why I would do that, because if you don't ask for a mission statement, then you have other people who want your job, the backstabbers who are waiting for you to mess up so they can jump in and take over. Mm-hmm. And they don't know anything about it. They just want the accolades to come with it. Uh, I don't want any accolades. Uh, I'm a public servant. I'm a social worker. I read that when you said that you're not a DJ, you're a social worker. I'm a social worker. I talk to people. I play music based on the weather. What's, what, what may be there when the sun is shining don't work for some who are at home alone mm-hmm. with the lights out, no job, nobody to call to say, hey, man, are you all right? You so know? you're that voice that they so, can, that, I, that companion you know, those, that they can bring in. These are my folk. Yeah. I'm, I'm there for them. I'm not there for me. Um, Jerry Carter is the guy that the people endorsed. I can't shake him. Hmm. Yeah, I try to get rid of him all the time to find out who I am, but I know who I am. I, uh, I'm the old man now, and Jerry is is the guy who hangs out with me and teaches me things. So <laughs> I love that. I look forward to going on the air every day because yeah. the days that I'm not on the air, I, I'm thinking somebody needs to talk to me needs to hear, hear your voice yeah 757-440-2665 or 1-800-940-2240 are the numbers to call to join our conversation have you listened to the time machine radio network have you listened to jerry's show the traffic the blues traffic jam give us a call let us know what you think Let's talk about some radio that takes you back in time. Uh, 757-440-2665 or 1-800-940-2240. I want to play another clip speaking about how you know about the music. So let's take a listen. Willie Dixon wrote that song, Coco Taylor, and Willie Dixon sang that song, Wang Dang Doodle. Come to think about it, a lot of people sung that song. Sure it's Dr. John, right place, wrong time is where you're going to find his version of Wang Dang Doodle. Four minutes after four o'clock, it's a Thursday, and we throw it back at you. It's yours now, baby. You do what you want to do. Yeah. Lord of Madison, I did the, I love how you get into it and you singing along with the song. Oh yeah, I, I, the blues does that to me. You know, um, uh, I, I I'm glad that Ethelene did what she did for me. Taught me how to read difficult books that I didn't even understand some of the words. Mm -hmm. And I thank all my ancestors, black and white, Mm -hmm. the guys who came before me on LSCFL, WLAC, WOL, WWRL, KGFJ. Wow. I'm a little bit of all of them. Um, They they, they taught me that um, somebody got to keep this music going. 
If you're just joining us, we're talking about the Time Machine Radio Network yeah. and one of his hosts, Mr. Jerry Carter. His show is called The Blues Traffic Jam. So who are you talking to at three, from three to seven every day? Um, those people who like the music that I play, those who uh, like the real deal. Uh, I, we, we have uh, two categories, contemporary mm-hmm. and traditional. Um, we had three. Uh, we don't deal with the third one that much anymore. That goes to another format. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there's so much music that people never had a chance to hear because of uh, how they viewed the world. And sometimes as you get a little older and further on down the road, you have time to sit back and listen, get up under a tree and pick your teeth or go <laughs> fishing. And you say, well, I never heard that before, but it's been there a long it's mm-hmm. muddy waters, mm-hmm. you know, and groups like that. Then you find out that uh, back in the 60s, uh, when Motown came out and Stax came out, uh, a lot of the, the blues died. But it was the young white guys, mm-hmm. Rolling Stones, European guys, and some American guys, Paul Butterfield. Mm-hmm. They copied these songs. And, of course... The R and B stations didn't play it, but the rock stations <laughs> did, mm. Mm. and the rock stations revived b- uh, blues. And then all of the artists uh, outside of the music genre adopted names of some of the songs, like the Manish Boys. Mm-hmm. That's the name of a song. Mm. So uh, it's keeping the music genre alive. It's keeping America alive because America thrives on blues. If it wasn't for blues, there wouldn't be any rock stars. Good point. None whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because they didn't have rock back in 1960. But they had the blues. But they had the blues. <laughs> so in 71, but right around 69, 70, 71, mm-hmm. America began to rock. How, what, does, what do the blues do for you? In other words, how do you decide? Is it based on your how you feeling that day in terms of which blues you're going to play? and A little bit. Uh, I, I have a list of songs that I, that I can play. Okay. Uh, I'm not supposed, I'm not supposed to stray from that, mm-hmm. but they didn't say I couldn't rearrange it. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's, it's, it's impossible for every program director to know what's going to happen on a certain day. But I'm the one who's in there. So when I come in and the sun is shining and it's getting ready to rain and then it rains outside, I have to change some music around Mm -hmm. to fit the moment Mm -hmm. for it to make sense. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but I play those songs. I may change it around, (laughs) but those songs that I've been told to play, I play them out of respect to the position of the music director and uh, the pre- and the PD. So is there a, a request line? I don't for your take show? requests. You do not take requests. Yeah. Okay. But I do. Let me explain that to you. Okay. <clears throat> there are people out there that work at other radio stations that will call you for a request mm-hmm. to get you out of the mood that you're in or the music that you're playing. They'll play something to to crash your your format. So oh, I don't oh, solicit. Oh. But my listeners know that I solicit. They <laughs> they know the telephone number. <laughs> and when they want to hear something, they call me. <laughs> and and I play what they want to hear. But I don't give the line. You don't I, give the number out. I don't give the number out. I don't have time. Um, but I notice you give the time. I give the lot. time all mm-hmm. the time because everybody doesn't have a watch. Yeah. And everybody's driving, everybody's doing things. And uh, a lot of times people depend on me for that. Mm-hmm. Like they depend on me for certain songs or a certain type of song. Mm-hmm. Or for me to say certain things or to acknowledge the fact that uh, they exist. Mm-hmm. That's why I, I realize that I'm not really a DJ. I'm a social worker. Yeah. I'm talking to people. I'm keeping people alive. They are keeping me alive. I need them just as much as, as, uh, as they need me. So tell me some stars that you've met or interacted with or stars dealt with. Any? Okay. Um, 
Muhammad Ali, mm -hmm. uh, Aretha Franklin, The Temptations. <laughs> I was in love with David Ruffin yeah. growing up, just so you know. <laughs> well, you ought to be glad you bypassed that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you'd, be, you'd be sitting right there beside Tammy Montgomery. Yeah, exactly. Uh, she, <laughs> Not so, a place I would want to well, be. Well, <laughs> you know, you, you run across all kinds of people in entertainment, like mm -hmm. you do in the everyday world. Mm -hmm. um, I met um, oh, the Commodores. Oh, right, Lionel Richie? Yeah, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I opened up for them. Uh, uh, Michael Jackson. I took Michael to the um, McDonald's in Roanoke in wow. my GTO. Wow, <laughs> they were the Jackson Five at the time. They started. They opened up for the Commodores. Oh wow! And uh, I was able to do that through Marshall Thompson, mm -hmm. who was uh, the surviving member of the Shylights. Now, you went to, you're a graduate of um, North Carolina Central and Virginia and State, Virginia State uh -huh. right? Um, and at Central, you were program director for that for that radio station, which that, really has a lot of um, strong chops in terms of jazz yeah. and other music, right? Yeah. Uh, I had some issues. Uh, the only, I'm glad you brought that up. Mm -hmm. um, at, at Central, I met the smartest students in the world. Everybody who worked for me at WNCU, mm -hmm. they were not communication majors. Wow. Um, and I did that on purpose. Uh, I wanted students to work for me who uh, didn't have a hidden agenda. I didn't want DJ Krispy Kreme on my radio station. Got you. So you wanted more substance. I wanted somebody on my radio station who I blindsided and showed them the light. And they made the best radio announcers than the ones who already had the experience working in the clubs, mm -hmm. who wanted to play a certain segment of music and commandeer the radio station. Mm -hmm. um, I've always been an avid believer that a college radio station is supposed to uplift it's not supposed to be a mundane radio station like everything else. Mm -hmm. And the city of license, if you don't have a beacon in the neighborhood mm -hmm. to tell you to come take some classes in psychology, if you are not doing well, maybe you ought to try business. Or maybe if you want to be a news anchor, come and learn the news. Mm -hmm. I didn't want them to go to the club all day long and then on the weekend too. Now, I've uh, had a lot of issues with my my constituency because they don't believe in that, but I understand that. Um, mm -hmm. All they know is commercial radio. Um, what do you see as the difference between commercial and, and um, public radio? Besides the fact that, that public radio doesn't have commercials. That, that, well, public but I radio mean, what, what's, what's the essence of the two? And which do you think um, will last? People will always want information. Uh, people will always want control. Um, with radio, formatting has a lot to do with demographics of the people that you're serving. Mm -hmm. and what it is that makes that demographic work. Generation Xers, Wires, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Everybody, we, we're like boats passing in the fog at night. Mm -hmm. We're 19 at one time, and next thing you know, we're 30, then we're 45, then we're 55, and now we oldies but goodies. Do you think that's why oldies but goodies still stick around? They stick so around because of the demographics. Uh, they don't want to hear their great great grandchildren's music. Uh, th they don't understand that that music is not for them anyway. It's the mm -hmm. same thing we went through as baby boomers when they had middle of the road with uh, Mule Train and stuff like that. Those old big band songs. That's the reason why Big Band died. Big Band died because of the fact that 
um, the the movie theaters came in, so people didn't dance as much. And then most places didn't have black radio, so we had to listen to radio. Mm-hmm. And then the top 25 markets, uh, they had ethnic radio or sapia radio mm-hmm. because that's where uh, it was densely populated by African Americans and the culture, and they had money. Mm-hmm. Radio is not for the listener. Radio was designed for the entrepreneur to sell advertising. Yeah. And then the radio station takes uh, the advertising dollars and go after the demographics of the people who's the music Who's they're playing for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you're off target with your demographics and and the music don't match the demographics, psychographically, psycho means mental, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. graphics, you're dealing with the, the numbers. If when you throw that dart and you don't hit your target, you're not going to win. Mm-hmm. You're going to change format. So the way you win is know your demographic, know your purpose. And then be consistent. And be consistent. Mm-hmm. And teach. Everybody wants to learn something every day. Uh, Auntie Bev, have you seen that? No. Mm-mm. On TikTok? No. <laughs> she was she was my news girl. Really? She's got three million hits. <laughs> wow. She, she teaches you a word every day. And she's smart. And that's only because I'm not on TikTok, but that's yeah. but yeah. but I hear what you're saying. Auntie yeah. Bev is on and Auntie everybody Bev, love okay. her. And she was my news girl. She went to Kent State and they were not gonna hire her. Hmm. Until you hired her? I hired her. I said, No, 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 no. She she's not going anywhere. So, I saw what, what she was going to do, and she did it. Would you encourage young people today to get into radio? Yeah, I encourage young people, if you want to be happy, you have to take control of your own destiny. Uh, don't get hung up uh, in relationships. There's always a relationship. You can always get one of those. <laughs> uh, I'm just being honest. I'm not yeah. saying not to love. Love. Mm-hmm. You know, get hurt so you know what you don't want. The only way you're going to learn. That's the only way you're going to learn. Right. But do for self first. Mm-hmm. Have a journal. I made my daughter get a journal so she could write every day her thoughts. Mm-hmm. I never read her journal. Uh, but that's what my Aunt Ethelene made me do. I had to write down every day what I was thinking. Do you still have your journals? My mom threw them away when I went to the service. Oh. I got I was going to ask you if you I, look back at them and read I, them. Um, I had a feeling that when I was writing what it was I wanted to do from okay. listening to radio at night, mm-hmm. uh, listening to Art Roberts on CFL and uh, Yvonne Daniels on LS and uh, Cousin Brucey on ABC and uh, other stations like KGFJ in Los Angeles and 93, 93 KHJ. I, I like I like to rock. <laughs> so what like brought blues. you? Why why WFOS? So F, WFOS used to be a station that was owned by the Chesapeake Public Schools. Yes, right. And I had um, a chance to go over there and play in the sand every day. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, I had uh, I was doing the Quiet Storm at one hundred five three. Okay. And um, I was an afternoon drive, but I was told I was too laid back. Mm. And so he put me in the quiet storm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't think I was laid back. I was just talking to people. I wasn't trying to be slick. Mm. I wanted to to, <laughs> to talk. You wanted to talk, and they wanted something else. They okay. wanted, they no. wanted a, a, you know, a Java. Yeah. It went down the tubes. So I went to the quiet storm where I could talk to people. I go where I can talk. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't want to be slick. So W, when you were there, mm-hmm. you did a variety of, of shows and so forth. And then the station at some point, so the, the station originally started as a teaching opportunity for students in Chesapeake schools, right? Uh, yeah, but it okay. was uh, it was dying. Uh, they mm-hmm. were not doing anything with it. Um, 
the kids, at, when I found out about WFOS, they came to 105.3 one day uh, on a tour. And so um, when Clear Channel began to see that they were having issues with um, the formatics, mm. mm-hmm. not as many people were listening it's to the radio. Mm-hmm. And it was their fault. They well, gave they gave the radio station to the wrong people. You don't give the radio station to the streets. What do you, you mean? Well, whatever the fad is, you don't always follow it. Because uh, the fad is not for everybody. Okay. Radio is for people who own businesses. So you play to your advertisers. You as play to your advertisers. Office. And then you let them deal with the demographics. Whatever it is you say. If I'm selling Converse All Stars, then of course I got a certain type of music in there. Mm-hmm. But if I'm trying to sell your house, I'm listening to Stanley Clark. Mm-hmm. Music like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, because that's where your head is at now that you're in your 30s and 40s. You're not in the clubs every night. You're, you mm-hmm. you ain't trying to make it rain. <laughs> you could care less. Yeah. You know, you're not hanging with the girls. So now you want something to soothe your soul, something to talk to you. So music really does, is reflective of where people are in life. If you're, in, you? if you're in control. Ah. If you lose control, then the music will tell you what to do and you'll end up waking up one morning at 50 and haven't done anything. Wow. Yeah. And that's what I fight all the time, and everybody thinks that I'm crazy and that uh, that I'm down in a certain genre of music. No, I'm saying that it's okay as long as you pass through. Life is something that we are passing through. Mm. So as long as you, well, now, what would you say then to somebody who says, well, you're stuck in the blues and in, I'm not in stuck old, anywhere. old old school music. <laughs> no, I'm not stuck. <laughs> because that's what you all play on the time radio network. I play it because people are asking for it. They want to know about it. It's been revived. Sometimes you miss it the first time around. It's like education. Mm-hmm. The the guy who cut grass and was I mean cut class and was in the gym all the time. He ends up being a doctor. Yeah, because he went back. And he went it back. Out. Yeah, things <laughs> wasn't was not working for him, and he finally said, "Hey, man, I'm the problem." Mm. You talking to him? I graduated in the bottom third of my class mm-hmm. because I didn't go to class. I would read the the summary and mm-hmm. end of chapter and go bust a D. So, what changed you? What what made you say, eventually, I got to do something different? When I went to a, to a family reunion, and I was the only one there who didn't have a degree. Wow. Eye-opening, wasn't it? And I said, oh, hell no, it ain't going to be me. Yeah. Next next um, class reunion I go to, I'll have some paper. So I went back to school that night. I felt that if I could go to the clubs on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday night, I could go to class Monday night for me, Wednesday night for me, Thursday night, Thursday night for me. Mm-hmm. And so that's what I did. Then I went to the club. Then I stopped going to the club. So as a DJ, you have evolved with with life. I mean, has life influenced you in terms of the way that you deliver now and in terms yeah. of the way that you think about the job that you do? Yeah. First, I have a responsibility to my um, to my ancestors. Mm-hmm. They didn't have the freedom to do the things they do, so I, I do it for them every day. I'm lucky that I had a f- two families that, that marriage together through marriage. Mm-hmm. Blue collars on one side, white collars on the other. They all made money. They all got married. So I knew that a relationship was important because they had families that began to be important to me as I got older. Uh, Community. The people who gave me a safe place to grow up and to play safely. 
I didn't realize they were educators and pilots, doctors. Some went north because they couldn't do it in the south. Yeah. And then I realized that um, this is kind of hard to say, but I'm going to say it. Um, there's only one egg and a million zygotes. Well, you're looking at the zygote. I made it to that egg, and I got here. So I have a responsibility to be accountable to mankind. That's what drives me. And that's probably why you were recently awarded the Virginia Association of Broadcasters Best Radio Personality recently. Congratulations. Thank you very much. You know, I never told anybody. <laughs> I'm like well, that. they know now. Yeah, they know now. I, 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 um, I have a hard time, you know, with awards. Not that I don't feel like I deserve some. Everybody likes it. I try to reward my listener every day with a good show. When I walk out of there and I didn't do a good show, I know it. Mm -hmm. what, do, what do you say to yourself? Because I know what I say to myself mm -hmm. when I come off the air and I go, didn't, didn't hit the mark this time, you know? Um, but what do you say to yourself? Same thing. Uh, what I have found out, and I've really been hard on myself, I have to be. Those of us who are professionals and those of us uh, that are caregivers, you're a caregiver. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we are constantly reevaluating who we are and what we are so that we can give the best of care. People realize that. That's why they listen to your show. Mm. We you. get we get the numbers, yeah. but the numbers are cold, calculated. It doesn't. It's not warm like the heartbeat or the telephone call. Um, mm -hmm. The fact that you're still on the air says that what you're doing is working and is needed. Because people will put anything on for the money. Yeah, that's true. And we're, even though we, we are in the media, entertainment mm -hmm. section of it, uh, we owe a lot to, our, to the people who depend on us as a lifeline every day. Absolutely. You know. Absolutely. You ever been in love with a guy that you're not in love with? Have I ever done what? <laughs> been in love with a guy that <laughs> you're that in love. not in love with? Yeah, what I mean by that is this. <laughs> There's always somebody that you love but, yeah, that's but, not, did not, but it, you did it, not marry them. Got gotcha. you. And gotcha. you were not, uh, you, you didn't date them. You didn't want them for that. Mm -hmm. They just made you happy. Mm -hmm. That's what you want to be on the radio to, well, to your listeners? No, that's what my listeners are to me. <laughs> <laughs> I come here for you them. Know, when they tell me they don't want to hear me no more, I'm going home and sit in the backyard. <laughs> and chill. Uh, yeah. But you know, but that is so important because you are are the type that depends on your listener you respect your listeners yes i do you know and, and so do i i mean i think that that's what makes a big difference as opposed to those who who think it's all about them right it really is all about our listeners because without our listeners we wouldn't be sitting where we are right i, I took a class in psychology so i could learn about different situations that people go through so when I'm on the air, I have a list of things that people are going through. Such as? What do you have on your list? Somebody's going through a divorce. Somebody's got to pay a fine that they didn't get, that they shouldn't have gotten. Mm -hmm. uh, Life. I, I'm, uh, at the end, Friday, I've got to move out of this apartment. I don't have any money. Yeah. I can't afford to get my medication. Wow. Life life issues, and that's what the blues address, yeah. too. Let's listen to one last cut that we pulled oh, you of you in the air. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Please don't play it again. <laughs> Look, John Mayer kicking off uh, the uh, Blues Ride at 5 on a Friday afternoon as we get this weekend party started for you. Yeah. 
Nine minutes after five o'clock. Welcome to the real world, everybody. We're out there in that traffic. Please drive carefully. Like talking to you, not about you now. Come on, drive carefully so we can get you from point A to point B. And at the same time, sit back, relax, and enjoy the music. It's been a rough week, and now it's time to relax and take it easy. Hard Times is the name of this hell. CD, if I can get it out. <laughs> Bonorama. All these guys are playing trombone when the levee breaks. Got to do that for my friend from the Eastern Shore. Ten minutes after five o'clock on the station where the blues comes to play. If it keeps on raining, that levee's going to break. I like talking to you, not about... <laughs> Well, we all know that when you die, people talk about you. Yeah, yeah. So I don't have all day long to say that. <laughs> so, you know, I ed- I do a lot of editing, and I learned that from radio. Uh, even though when you're in English, you have to have a complete sentence. Yeah. But I learned that in radio, you do fragments. So you have conversations with your audience. Yeah, I'm talking to them. Yeah. yeah Let yeah, them know that yeah. they... I've been there. It's on the Time Machine Radio Network. If you have not checked Jerry out, please do so from 3 to 7 p.m., yep. uh, Monday mm-hmm. through Friday. Um, and you can hear it on 88.7 FM or 99.3 FM, or you can stream it live at whro.org. Right. Isn't that uh-huh. correct? That's correct. All right. What's uh-huh. the last thing? We got two minutes. What do, what do you want to say to your audience? Say to my audience so they'll come over and become your audience too. Well, <laughs> public radio or public media, you can always find something here with us. Uh, we don't succumb to fads. We, we succumb to needs. Yeah. If you ever have a need, you know, come see about us. You'll see that we got something for you. Absolutely. You know, so. You know, and in and, and, and particular, we, we try very, very hard to get everyone to come to our airways, but particularly our folk, you know, yeah. because they it, we're not something that they would have at top of mind. We're not commercial. You know, we do. We have conversations. Mm-hmm. We, But we bring something different that if people know about us, they come and enjoy us. Well, with the blues, dad always played the blues. Dad always played the jazz. When mom and dad divorced, dad would take the stereo. Wow. And leave the house. So he took the music. He took the art form. He left mom and the kids. Now the young boy is the father of the house and he's too young to be. Mm. And we got to get that back. We got to reverse that. Got to bring the music back. Absolutely. Yeah. Jerry, it's been a pleasure. It's Thank you so pleasure. very, very yeah. much. You can hear Jerry. It's called the Blues Traffic Jam, 3 to 7 on the um, radio mm, Time Machine Radio Network. There you go. I forget sometimes. I know, exactly. <laughs> now, be sure to check out all of the radio stations in the WHRO public media family. You can stream them all live at WHRO.org. And if you want to hear this show again or share it with a friend, please visit our website, anotherviewradio.org, and download the podcast. We'd love to send you our EVU newsletter. It's a once-a-week reminder of upcoming shows, so be sure to sign up. Next week, it's another view on health with cardiologist Dr. Keith Newby. We'll talk about the physical, mental, spiritual, social, and emotional health of African-American men. Our theme music is an original composition created especially for Another View by Jay Sennett. Special thanks to Dr. Barry Graham filling in for Lisa Godley as show producer. Jordan Christie is our audio engineer and Danielle Saunders answered our phones. I'm Barbara Ham Lee. Hey. Let's be good to one another and be sure to join me next Thursday at noon for another view. Support comes from Hampton Roads Community Foundation, carrying out your charitable wishes forever, whether it's helping shelter animals, feeding the homeless, enhancing the arts, or supporting students. Learn more at leaveabequest.org.